Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're screening for current ratios. Kevin Matris, our top stock screener here at Zach's, is going to take us through the paces of this week's screen. Now, you know, you've talked about a lot of different ratios, right. P.E. ratios, price to sales ratios, return on equity ratios, who knows what kind of... But <laughs> current, <hypnotizing> me. <laughs> but current ratio, is, that's a new one. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think we actually may have talked about it before. Did we? Uh, I didn't recall. If, if That's why we, I said it was a new one. Yeah, if we did, it was probably a while ago. But uh, the current ratio is simply another item to gauge a company's financial health. So let's take a look at the definition. All right. The current ratio, uh, the, the way you look at it is it is current assets divided by current liabilities. So the higher the ratio, the better, meaning the company has more liquid assets to meet its short-term obligations. So a ratio of two or more, for example, means a company has at least twice as many short-term assets than short-term liabilities, and this is generally considered good. That's kind of like the threshold. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that the current ratio right now for the stocks in the S&P 500 is 2.09. But I think uh, if you were to look at the current ratio mid-year, I think the current ratio back then was 1.75. So we are looking at a very good improvement. And today's current ratio is an even bigger improvement than from the beginning of the year because in January the current ratio was 1.67. So okay. there has been a nice improvement for the stocks in the S&P. Mine remains at zero all year long, <laughs> personally. <Nice. laughs> so how does one go about using this current ratio? Screening for it is very easy. Uh, it is a ratio. So if you're going to be on our screener on Zax.com or even on the Research Wizard, you're first going to want to go to the ratios category. And then once you're there, you'll find it under the liquidity and coverage section. Once you're in the liquidity and coverage section, you're going to find an item called current ratio. That is the one. And the way I like to use it is, once again, you do have that threshold of two. So I would say you want to at least find a current ratio above two. But I prefer to compare a stock's current ratio to the median for its industry. I think that's the best way to look at it. All right. So the way you walked us through it, is that how you're going to do it in this week's screen? Yeah, we have a screen. We are keying in on the current ratio in a couple of ways. Um, and in this week's screen, I am adding in some other logical items to really find a company that is doing good earnings-wise, but also make sure it has a really good financial health picture because we really aren't out of the woods economically yet. So mm -hmm. here's the screen. First off, we're looking for companies with a Zacks rank of a one. Uh, again, this only allows Zacks strong buys to come through your screen. Then we want the current ratio to be greater than the median for its respective X industry. Like we said, looking at the companies with the strongest liquid positions to meet their short-term financial obligations, that is key right now. But at the very least, we want the current ratio to be greater than two. So if the median for the industry is, let's say, 1.5, and let's say the current ratio is 1.6, that's not going to qualify this screen. So not only does it have to be higher than the median for its industry, but it also has to get above that threshold of two. Okay. Then we're looking at the growth rates. I think this is a very important key measure as well. We want the projected growth rate to be greater than the median for its industry. So again, we want to find the best companies within the best groups. And at the very least, we want the projected growth rate to be above zero. So there has to be some real growth. And then all of these things are being applied to companies that are trading over $5 a share and that have at least 100,000 shares traded on a daily basis. And how many stocks came through this week? I think this week there were, I think it was like 28 or 30 stocks. So here's, here's a couple of them. BlackRock came through the screen, uh, Cabot Corp, Sourcefire, Intuitive Surgical, and Valiant Pharmaceuticals. It's interesting because when I ran the screen, it was an extremely diverse set of stocks. I mean, you saw almost every single industry represented. But again, I think these are very, very good stocks to take a look at because all of these stocks show they are financially strong. And as I said earlier, since we are not out of the woods economically, mm -hmm. these are some key measures to really focus in on. Do you own any of these? Uh, I don't have any of those. All right. Uh, are there others that we can check out in the text version of this week's screen? Um, 
I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I have an extra couple more. I would say go to the article anyways. And I was about to say that. Well, it's very easy because if, uh, if you do want to see all of the other picks that came through or figure out how to really use this in your own stock picking criteria, uh, you can do so on the free screener or you can just simply sign up for a trial to the research wizard and you can get all of the stocks on this list. Forget about just five or six, you can get all of them. All right. So check out the text version of this week's screen by going to our homepage, zax.com, and scrolling down the homepage, clicking on the link, which is the headline, right next to Kevin's smiling face. If you want to check out more about the Research Wizard stock screening and backtesting software program, which is what Kevin uses to achieve these screens, then go to zax.com forward slash research wizard. Easy enough. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.